Mais mal mais des What you do is Well, leading fashion designer Guo Pei, who grew up during China's Cultural Revolution, made world headlines when Rihanna wore her yellow gown to the Met Gala in 2015, the omelette dress, they called it. She's also <laughs> made Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People list and is now on her way to becoming China's only haute couture designer. She is the focus of Yellow is Forbidden, which is the fifth feature-length documentary from multi-award winning Kiwi filmmaker Petra Brett Kelly. Now, this is such a stunning film, and it's really great to have the filmmaker here with us, Petra, welcome. Thank you. It Thank you both. So lovely to have you here. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background. This is this is not your first walk in the park. No, it filmmaking. isn't. It isn't. I mean, this is my fifth feature documentary, but it is probably my fifty-third documentary of varying lengths. So you know, I grew up in a family of storytellers, the Irish. You know, sitting around in Fakatane, the power would go out after an earthquake or something like that, and we'd all sit around with candles and tell stories. So it was sort of a natural mm. progression for me to then kind of go. OK, I want to tell visual stories now. So, yeah, just started making films. Studied journalism because there wasn't really a film school here in New Zealand and then just started making films. And you stumbled across uh, Guao Pei. Were you interested in fashion beforehand? No. How did that whole relationship start? <laughs> no, I'm really not particularly interested in fashion. I'm interested in groups of people and I'm interested in individuals and the resilience of, of the human spirit really. So I sort of look for somebody in a in sort of an interesting moment in their life and then film them for years, which was sort of an interesting conversation to be had with Guo Pei, you know, when she doesn't speak um, English and I don't speak Chinese. And for me to say, <laughs> I have no idea how long I'm going to film with you for. I don't know what really what the story is about. Um, and, you know, I'll just be hanging around. You'll get really sick of me and I'll be there when you cry and when you laugh and all the drama and uh, yeah so what do you think and she said yes which kind of you know every time one of my subjects says yes it blows me You're away. It's like Ooh yeah. How long did you end up filming with her for? Two years. Two years yep. of having someone in your life yeah. doing 14 that. Fourteen blocks of filming in six countries. And how did you find out? I mean, where did she? How did you find out about her? So I finished my previous film, A Flickering Truth, where I'd spent two and a half years in and out of Afghanistan, and that had an early great release, and it was planned. And I thought, okay, that's because half the half the thing of making a film is how it's going to get out there, right? So I knew I could relax. So I collapsed on the couch and ate Fijo crumble for two weeks. It was really good timing. <laughs> Fijo's were in season, <laughs> and um, and then I thought, okay, what? It, you know, what, where do you want to go? Where do you want to hang out? What do you want to? What story do you want to tell next? And I'd written myself a little bit about Guo Pei. I had this ideas folder a few years ago. She used to make these shoes where a whole world was inside the heel of the shoe. That's right. Yeah, and I thought that's interesting. So I literally googled her name and up popped the Rihanna thing it had just happened and I was like okay this is timely <laughs> picked up the phone dialed a number I found for her and on the third time somebody didn't hang up on me because I don't speak Chinese and they were obviously running around her atelier and in Beijing trying to find somebody who spoke as some English and I said you know I'd like to come and meet Guo Pei. no 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 she's very private don't come and I was like yeah no I think I might come and they're like no please don't come please don't come yeah no okay well we'll see you soon <laughs> <laughs> so I called up my DP Jake Bryant, my, my director of photography, and said, should we go to China? Three days later, off we went. Wow. And, you know, she is a fascinating character. And well done, by the way, because I don't you. care really much about fashion, <laughs> but as soon as I started watching this, I was gripped. I found Thank it amazing. You. 120 euro, 120,000 euro for a dress. I mean, oh, it was yeah. just insane. She, she's quite a big deal. and Quite eccentric, is she? Yes, she is. She's really one of the beautiful people. She really is. When I met her, you know, I really do believe as a filmmaker, I cast like a dress drama filmmaker cast, right? I meet somebody and when I met her I thought, no, there's something very quirky, very mm. interesting, kind of odd about her. And so I thought she could carry a, a feature film. And also it was important for me to kind of acknowledge that China also is this, in this really interesting mm. place at the moment. And so I thought there's complexities here that I could explore. But she is, no, she makes me laugh a lot. She's just fabulous. And you had this great story too leading up to the show when she could show it in, in Paris. Mm. What was the most shocking part for you making the docker was anything did anything really surprise you nothing you know people don't surprise me too much anymore I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um but i think the level of the the um 
buffer, the, sort of the barrier that she met, you know, the racism, the kind mm. of, the what, what do you think you're coming into our world, into Europe and telling us, you know, about your extraordinary work. And so mm. she was like, but wait on, China's had 5,000 years of design history. We have an aesthetic. And so that surprised me, the level of that, how much people kind of looked down at her. Mm. And people would come up to me and, you know, because clearly Jake and I were the only Westerners in her, in her team, and they'd come up and they'd go, well, which one is she? <laughs> which, which one is the designer? And I was just oh, wow. like, don't be so offhand. She's an artist. She's oh. extraordinary. And the whole story and the way you've told it is amazing. It is. Uh, I think it's definitely and worth And you've got saying. a dress too, haven't you? $100,000? Oh, <laughs> I, I must actually ask her what the value, because I need to have it insured. But yeah, for my previous <laughs> film, it was selected for the Oscars, so she made me this dress. Brilliant. Excellent. So I'll be wearing that. Wearing you will that definitely be wearing that. Yeah. It is a great, wonderful great documentary. Movie. Well done. Thank you. Yellow is Forbidden Screens as part of the New Zealand International Film Festival in Auckland from Sunday before heading to Wellington and then further south. You can check out the Film Festival website for further details. Yes, do. You'll find it fascinating, much like I did.